Uh, I'm Kiff Scholl. I directed Don Giovanni Tonight, Don Carlo Tomorrow. I've directed now, I think this is probably my 10th, no, my 12th play I've directed by Dennis. He writes the way, sort of, um, the brain works. Absolutely insane. Really, really wonderful. I mean, I, I was very lucky to get just absolutely gifted actors who were 100% gung-ho into the project. As an actor, it's been really challenging. It's been challenging. It's been interesting. It's been great. It's been a challenge. I mean, the, the play itself is very challenging. It's been a challenge, but so much fun. Absolutely, it's been challenging. Extraordinary challenge, and a wonderful one. Crazy. Crazy, because it's 17 actors on stage the whole time. 18. And we have a guest artist every single week. 19, if you count. Luigi, I guess. But but it's been kind of an exciting process that uh, I've really enjoyed and really hated. It's been the time of my life, actually. I loved the idea of building, kind of basically building a character from the ground up and looking for clues in a, uh, in a challenging script. What Dennis Miles has written is kind of, I mean, there, there are remarkable things in it. How your character feels about everybody, all the other characters, who he's friends with, who he's frenemies with, who he hates, who he's attracted to. You do have to be completely present throughout because we're like this giant amoeba working together to make something happen. They're in this strange little vortex. It's their own world. There's so many relationships that have developed that are not scripted, obviously. They're not in the play, per se. A tension-filled relationship sort of began with me and the character uh, Claudia and Eduardo. Eduardo, I just think she cannot stand. And I think he's like the epitome of the actor to her. And she's like, God, he thinks he's such an artist. He has a crush on Thomas. He hates Bryce and Sergio because Sergio turned him down romantically when he tried to hit on him. There's lots of things like that have changed. Like alliances have formed that aren't in the script. That's the beauty of theater. You get to choose what you're looking at. You're not being told, like film, you're looking at this person's facial expression. Instead, you can be listening to a conversation and seeing that this interaction between these two people are happening at the same time. It's not that normal up and down scenes. It's difficult because it's not really scenes. It's more like miniature segments. and. It's cool to feel such a sense of camaraderie and, and share the stage with, you know, 17 other people. and With 17 people on the stage all at once. It's chaos on stage. It's a hard play. I have... Four entrances and two freak outs. <laughs> so, and you know, you could count each entrance a freak out. It's almost like a fight choreography because there's so many people on stage moving in and out and moving around that the actors were given a lot of power to make their own decisions. They basically, I mean, I can't say that they blocked themselves, but I could not block every moment that happens on this stage. I had to say, you guys discover what needs to happen and then I'll shape it from there. He was like, where, where would you feel you would go at this point? And I'm so used to cross left, do this, do that. And he just tried to let them figure it out. And then all this business, I mean, the actors have to accomplish things because they're they're waiting to go on stage. So much time to kill backstage. It's like a three hour opera and they're in like two minutes of the opera. And so they have to change costumes, they have to put on their makeup, they have to do their hair, and then they have to kill time. It's sort of like noises off with a lot more pathos. Finding all of the action stuff to do for two hours on stage when you're not saying lines and creating relationships in a world and... My favorite part's when I get to lay down on the chaise lounge for like 20 minutes. It's awesome. I can't speak with the group. I'm the only one who is not on stage the entire time. Building all of that activity, busy work, whatever you want to call it, with other cast members. I'm blocking nightmare and dream all at the same time. <laughs> I sort of took um, Altman as an inspiration. You know, in his movies, Prairie Home Companion, Fred-a-Porter, there's all these characters on stage and there's all this business and the camera finds the actor. But in the, on stage, the camera is the audience. So the audience has to find the actor, which, and they don't know who the actor is, so the actor has to draw attention to themselves. I love ensemble casts. I love Robert Altman movies. Oh, and I'm talking to um, Diana here because this, I want to talk to her about this. And just like creating all these like stories and all these relationships. There's conversations that come out of, out of the blue that have already been taking place for a long period of time that you're just hearing the moment that the, the writer wanted you to hear. And so I really made a point of whenever an actor is 
throwing in a line out of nowhere or starting a conversation, I always made a, found a way to have them draw attention to themselves. It's the actors controlling the focus of the audience of where the focus should be. And not, you know, not be too loud because you can't take away focus from the people who are having the main, the real lines of the show at that moment. And as you start watching, you, can, you almost feel like the lights are changing because your focus is moving from one actor to the next in this whole constant organic moving thing. The Altman-esque thing, like, you know, conversations start and then they pick up again and, you know, just the movement of it. You know, it's every once in a while a character would say a line from across the stage and I would say, you know what, no, you know what, you gotta be over here right now. It seems like the blocking has almost become more important than the lines to some degree because you can't say your line if you're talking trash about someone when they're standing right next to you. What if you just cross the stage to get a piece of costume or, or grab a Q-tip or something? Find a reason to draw attention to yourself. To watch him figure out, did you hear that conversation? Did you hear that person talk about you? Or did you hear it and act like you didn't hear it? Because it's like, oh shit, I can't say that next to him. I'm, he can't hear me. There's a lot of conversations that take place where the whole room hears everything. And then there's points where only a small group of people hear things. It's, yeah, it's hard. My biggest thing has always been uh, to keep it not one note. Okay, what's the difference between this freak out and that freak out? I mean, at the beginning of the rehearsal process, you know, I felt like they were the United States and I was Puerto Rico. I'm connected, but I'm not really connected. It's kind of interesting, but I found a groove into it. It's so visually entertaining and stimulating and there's just so much going on. It's almost like a mental game. You're, you're walking away with this mental, like, Awakening, I guess I want to call it, because your, your, your brain is constantly stimulated. Favorite moments? I don't know. I always like when Eduardo does his speeches. I really like John Kino's speech. It's been interesting watching it come off the page and come to life, and, and um, as he sort of shakes literally and physically sometimes people. And uh, his story is actually interesting once you really listen to it and cue in. I was really excited to see the, the last scene. I am really, really excited to put this in front of an audience who doesn't know what they're here for. My biggest thing is, oh, you know, I, I don't know. Well, you can edit this out. It is just absolutely filled with surprises <laughs> <laughs> and little delightful little moments. I either dance or I act. And so it's, I've never done a show like this before. You know, there are the pauses, there are the dance numbers, there are the bubbles. I mean, you know, there's, a, there's some really remarkable shit in there that isn't dialogue. And I just think that, that it has the potential to really, really blow an audience away, and let's hope they like it. Where nonsense actually makes sense. It makes sense, and it, and it feels like something. Come see it. Wally, any words?